People have known for a long time violence begets violence, but I don't think people really understood that it is actually a contagious problem. We look at violence as an epidemic. It's a disease, and it's contagious. When you hurt, you're likely to be talking about getting your revenge. But if you got someone there to jog your memory to the repercussions or the consequences, if you're willing to listen, you're less likely to do it. It's a violence prevention program. We're trying to prevent violence on the front end. I come from the gang lifestyle, kind of like the guys that we interact with now. I mean, you know, I was 18, so that's how I can relate to just making bad decisions, wanting to be a part of different things instead of going, you know, the school route. You know, I wanted to go the street route. I wanted to be able to carry a pistol and, and justify why I got it, you know, and, and all that just made sense to me. And so I found myself in it, and unfortunately, it landed me 10 years in federal penitentiary. I was just following up with you about the trainings. So those are the proposed dates right now. A lady in my neighborhood came to me. She said, this is a new program. It's about saving lives and stopping these shootings and killings. I was a violence interrupter. I was an outreach worker. After constantly showing up and doing the cookouts and going to the funerals and showing that I'm sincere about this, the community and people, they really bought into me. This is a statement I got from my brothers in New York, and I like it. Formerly incarcerated professional, because I'm a professional now, and I was formerly incarcerated, but it shouldn't stop me to be somebody good in society, somebody that can give back to society. How many days y'all going now without a shooting? We had 116.93 on this side, and in the old target area, it's 216 and 115. We look at violence as learned behavior. If you get mad at me and I get mad at you, all my friends, they don't even know you, they're mad at you. So now we want to stop the back and forth, the retaliations that could come with it as well. If we can't stop it on the front end, we definitely want to stop damage control from one family being mad at this family. First, you got to stop the transmission of that. Then you got to change the behavior associated with it. And then you got to change the way the community thinks about it. And that's what your violence is about. I was shot and paralyzed at 18. I went back to that same environment where I was shot at, did the same things, the same problem that we see and face every day. My friends was part of that problem. They was irate, pissed off, ready to retaliate. I'll be 42 this year. I ain't just changed overnight. We partnered with three level one trauma centers. It started out with outreach workers, then violence interrupters, and then you took those same two components and put it inside the hospital institution where we just replicate what we did in the community. We do have a particular interest in patients who've been victims of violence and who've been exposed to violence. When someone comes in with a violent injury, with a gunshot wound, for example, we're already kind of attuned to the notion that we need to investigate not only what happened in this particular instance, but what happened before. Whenever someone is shot, stabbed, or jumped on, either myself or someone from my team go talk to the victim and the family. Hold on, that's the hospital calling right there. Anyone at the hospital staff could call the hotline number. And this is seven days a week, 24 hours a day, right then and there in the crisis. OK. Uh, is he awake and talking? All right, thank you. Violent injury accounts for maybe half of our patients here. We know that our patient population comes from a place where they may have witnessed violence before, they may have seen their friends or loved ones shot or injured in some way, or people die. When you look at the people that we're serving, these are some of the people that, you know, people have gave up on, threw their hands up, and say enough is enough. But because we come from some of those same neighborhoods, because we're familiar with that same population, they tend to listen to us. We give them the platform to say, you could change your life. There's some people that we've ran into that we knew about before we ran into them, that we knew it wasn't no change in these guys. But the fact that they were in here, we had that opportunity. The door opened. Violence is a public health problem. What happens when they leave the hospital? There has to be a community. That community has now been traumatized. That family has been traumatized. I'm probably one of the most modest people you're probably going to speak to, at least that work for ceasefire. But if I was to sound cocky, we damn good at what we do. 
I got children, so I know I needed to change anyway. Do something different. The streets weren't working. It was a dead end, either jail or death. I choose neither one. We try to stop the retaliation and then dispatch the guys that are on the field so that they can stop anything on the front line. All right, so Tomas, who's this guy we're gonna see? Stacy. A group of guys came at them and shot at them, hitting Stacy in the finger. And we got him over here in the hospital. Stacy was like, you know, he felt like calling different type of people. And his his thing was trying to retaliate. He actually got released the same day, but I had enough time with him to detour his way of thinking. How long ago when you got shot? Got shot a couple of times. Uh, first time I got shot at 18, shot in my leg. Then I got shot again at 21. I was going to job court. Met this awesome brother right here. I was just on a rage, a revenge, revenge, revenge. And this good brother right here came to me and taught me how to let go. I feel like if he would never taught me how to let go, I'd still be bloodthirsty. I lived in Inglewood all my life. I used to actually live right here on this block where the site is at. So it's really personal to me when it comes to right here. We hired people who were closely related and closely connected to the street. In my previous life, I was connected to the streets. Now, I could walk up and be like, man, what happened? Man, ooh, such and such did this, and they got into it over this, and it's really about that girl. And So I'm gonna know everything that happened. And then I know how to talk to who I need to talk to to prevent it from escalating further. So the same influence that I had to motivate people to do what it is that I wanted to motivate them to do at that time, maybe now I got that same influence to motivate people to change. I've been in for three months, bro, and it's the best experience of my life, honestly. It's people that's teaching me, it's people that's showing me, it's people that understand me, and it's people in here that's just like me. Since you see them out of it, you know there's a way out of it. Our job is to try to stop shootings and killings on the front end. And we've been successful in doing that sometimes. But how do you get credit for something that never happened? So people don't talk about the stuff that we got in front of and intervened and stopped. But every time somebody gets shot, it's like we failing. But how many people did we stop from getting shot? How many gang wars did we prevent that you don't have no knowledge of because it didn't make the front page? Only way we know is if, if people talk to us and let us know what's going on, we prevent them. So we try to stop it before it happened instead of being reactionary. See, I was just looking at some of our sites and the different trends and stuff right here, you know, the up, the down. And if you look at Philadelphia, Philadelphia has a downward, so they've been doing good. Hey, Quinzel, this is Marcus. Oh, what? Oh, wow. Dang. Shooting response is going to be tomorrow? What, what time? Okay, I appreciate it. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Wow, yeah, they're doing a shooting response. Um, four o'clock tomorrow, like three people got shot in Philadelphia. Mm. We have replication sites of the cure violence model throughout the country. The first time I came to North Philadelphia, it was the roughest I've seen. And I've been all over, but North Philadelphia, oh, it was rough looking. Memorials out everywhere you look, so much violence and poverty. What's up, <laughs> my brothers? Everything's <laughs> good, man. Everything's good. Good, good, good. good to see you, man. Likewise, man. How's you been? Everything been good? Yes, everything good. They hadn't had a shooting in a while, then they had a situation hey. happen, and three people got shot. Within 72 hours, they organized a shooting response. 
So they're gonna march and hit the street where he got shot because it's in their target area. And it just happened a couple days ago? Yeah. The shooting yeah. did? I think it was retaliation from the shooting. From the shooting, the shooting, the shooting four. Four. We actually had four The one that was from the day before, days. was it in your area too? That same yeah. area right here. Same, 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 same area. area. Oh, okay. yeah. These guys all their life, they've been in the streets. They've been around high risk situations. They sometimes, they incited them. I incited them. And now they're ready to do something different with their lives. We was in a meeting with the guys around the corner, somebody broke in his crib, stole uh -huh. a gun or whatever. Yeah. And uh -huh. they was, he called somebody down to retaliate, and they was ready to retaliate. It was a big mediation, yeah. I just put it in. So it's easy for me to come in and because they already look up to me. It's not nothing that you just look up one day and say, you know what, I'm gonna be a violence interrupter, outreach worker, and I'm gonna start putting myself between group A and group B with no bulletproof vest, with no, all we have is our words. If we get these young boys seeing differently and thinking differently, right. we win it. Another That's it. Right. That's right. That's it. I grew up two blocks from here on 23rd and Oxford and uh, Blumberg Projects. When I was 12, I got arrested with two blocks in my book bag at school and I did five years. I don't want to have to carry guns, but it's just the way I grew up. So anytime I feel hot-headed and I get mad about something, I just want to go pick up a gun. I call one of these guys and they, they calm me down. They, they'll come get me. There's been a couple of times where one of their guys actually came and took a gun out of my hand. And, and they, they helped me out a lot. And I, I think I'd be back in jail if it wasn't for them. I'm only 19 and I did five years. So I think I'd be back in jail if it wasn't for them. That's the one edge that we have, credible messengers. Hands down, the strongest part. They're the ones out there actually saving the lives right now. They need to be on these streets and constantly doing what they do. Oh, wow. Oh, so this is where the first shooting took place? The first one, or this is where the three this got shot? This one happened last, 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 summer. last summer. Oh, OK. That's your son? Oh, man, my condolences, brother. He ended up laying right here on the ground. He was 20, he was 20 years, he was 20 years, 19. He had three months to go in school and three colleges had already accepted. I went upstairs to shave and two minutes later, he was laying on the ground. Oh, wow. When they had the shooting out here yesterday, I was in here cleaning out my son's room and I had found the letter that he had did in schools and they wanted to know where were you from? You know about your neighborhood. I'm from the hood where it's dark outside late nights. You can't you can't walk outside without a gun. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I'm from the hood where you look the wrong way, you get jumped oh, or gunned down. No. I'm from North Philly. We were standing in there reading the letter, and then a few minutes later, we heard the shots down the street. All I want is justice. And I'm yeah. trying not to have street justice. Right. You know? And just think if it's a parent that's not as strong as him, that's all about vengeance. It is an epidemic. It's like just as spread as the measles and chicken pox across the country right now. I actually grew up right around here on this corner on Custer Street. This was like a real bad, bad, bad neighborhood. This very, very spot right here, I done got locked up numerous times. When I was growing up as a kid, like, my family really gave up on me. I sold drugs all my life, ever since I was nine. My first case, I got caught with two guns, 100 bundles of dope, 70 bundles of rocks, and a stolen car. I was 13, and then I didn't come out till I was 25. When I came home, I told myself I was never going to go back. We stayed in the middle of this block, like, where the house is going at right here. This the was our crack house right here. The one across the street at the corner boarded up. That was our crib, too. I actually knew Shakia when I was younger. Honestly, like, when I came home, I was looking for Shakia because we used to sell drugs together. Like, I used to get into a whole lot of bad stuff with her. So when I came home, my intentions was to find her again and go back to doing all the bad stuff that, you know what I'm saying? And then she was like, no, like, that ain't the way of life no more. When she looked me in my face and told me we wasn't going back to doing what we was doing, that when I actually seen her with this orange sweater on and she explained to me, like, she was with this Philadelphia ceasefire program, and she was like, it changed her. She like a role model to me. Like, she still pushed me when I'm like, oh my god, like, I can't do it because my criminal background. She like, I did it, like, why can't you do it? When I was out there, like, I always, like, seen something in him. Like, I just made sure he was all right out there. I'm just trying to right my wrongs. Pouring my cause to people, bad I've done to people in my life. Like, if I can help somebody out, you know, 
try to make a difference, like that's what I'm all for now. I was homeless when I came home. Uh, I came home from prison. I didn't have no uh, address to use. So I was homeless, so they made me go to a shelter. And uh, Shakia told me, don't worry about it, that she would have me out of there in less than a month. On my 29th day, I found the job with Shakia. And then that's how I knew it was serious. Shakia, like, I don't know what it was or like, what her drive was. I don't know what she seen in me that I didn't see in myself that caused her to like do the things that she did for me. She made me feel like I was her son, like, like it's gonna be our, but at the end of the day, I knew that there was my, like, I knew right then and there, like, if she didn't give up on me, I was gonna give her my all. And that's why I stood with it. And my life has changed dramatically in the last couple months. I'm grateful. I'm grateful, uh, grateful I didn't have to go back to jail. I'm grateful that somebody believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. Yo, you know what I just realized, yo? How many times you came down to the shelter, yo? Like, he made me realize, like, real stuff, yo. He made me realize, like, how many times you came to grab me. Like, when I told you. Real shit, yo. When everybody turned their back on me, dog, like. Did I ever turn my back on you? Fuck no, man. It just seemed like, like he was just there to save me like every fucking time, yo. Like even, when, oh my God, man. So when I came home, my mom said she wished that I would have died in prison, yo. So when I came home, I was like, I'm gonna fucking like do whatever it take for me. Like, and then Shakira, like, yo, I swear to God, you, sure you. <laughs> You gave me hope, dog, when I had nothing. It made me feel like somebody would care about me. It's working, definitely. It's working, it's been evaluated, the show that it's working. And that's why this organization has expanded the way it has. We have a site in Cape Town, South Africa. We just visited Palestine, Israel. We've been to Colombia. We're in Juarez. And we have a program in Puerto Rico. For the control of punto de droga, eso es algo bien mínimo. Sabes, eso aquí prácticamente no existe. Tenemos personas de afuera que dicen, pero qué raro, porque mayormente yo siempre he visto que las guerras de bando son por control de punto de droga, solo aquí por venganza. Nenes de 12 años que me dicen, no, yo, pues, yo que no puedo ir porque voy para allá, supe, me van a matarme. Y nosotros pues estamos tratando de cambiar esa mentalidad. Luisa has historically been known as one of the most violent towns on the island of Puerto Rico. They have a history of homicides and shootings. We hire credible messengers here as well. These guys do the same kind of work we do right back at the States. We hire guys and ladies who live in the community, who are known in the community, who are respected by the community, and many times have been through some of their own trials and tribulations. So the community knows them, the guys know them, so they're able to intervene and able to have conversation with guys in crisis situations and mediate disputes so that they don't turn out to be deaths or shootings. Me mezclaban esto de los gallos y pues casi siempre para hacer entre corillos. Metido en, en conflicto, en problemas, problemas a veces hasta con la misma justicia. Violento, era violento. Parte de los requisitos es haber tenido algún tipo de experiencia en las calles. Yo era líder como de una ganga de mi barrio. Antes yo no podía ayudar a las demás personas eso que yo necesitaba. Como que quizá a mí no, la ayuda que a mí no me dieron. Y cuando ella me explicó que era la alcalde de paz, yo decía, wow, si yo cambié, yo creo que para todo el mundo puede haber un cambio. Después pues tuve un encuentro y lo que me faltaba era pedir perdón a los mismos jóvenes con los que tuve mucho conflicto. Era la meta que me faltaba porque tengo la herramienta por medio del programa de ayudar a los otros a conseguir esa palabra paz. Hay un muchacho aquí que es violento, violento a capacidad. Y el único que pudo hacer 
que en su comunidad él hiciera una actividad, fue pues Samito. O sea que quiere decir que los buenos somos más que los malos. El acuerdo de paz en el barrio de Loiza, yo lo considero que eso llegó en el momento oportuno a nuestro pueblo. Cuando esta gente llegaron a nuestro barrio, se han unido. Yo tengo fe de eso porque yo lo viví. Tuve un hijo con varias situaciones y Ajá, ellos trataron de darle la ayuda que necesitaba. Trataron de sacarlo hacia adelante. El muchacho lamentablemente pues, fue asesinado en el pueblo. Yo perdí a mi hermano, a mi papá y a mi tío juntamente en una misma masacre. Y después, ¿quién diría verdad que mi hijo también? El dolor que yo siento, que yo sentía en aquel momento y que todavía siento, yo no se lo puedo prácticamente describir a ustedes. Yeah, yeah. Solamente una madre que ha perdido un hijo sabe lo que yo estoy sintiendo. Y si yo puedo como madre evitar que otra madre sufra, ¿por qué no lo voy a hacer? Nosotros no queremos venganza, pero queremos paz. Queremos felicitar a, a Jessica porque ella y su familia han tenido una resiliencia tremenda y ellos han cortado ese ciclo de continuar la enfermedad. Ella ha sido parte de curar, la, está curando la violencia. Creo que liberar de esta guerra a nuestros jóvenes y ver una población compartirse un terreno como único para todo el mundo, no por divisiones, creo que es una meta bonita. It works. Cure violence works here on the island of Puerto Rico, just as it does in Chicago, Kansas City, Philadelphia, New York, and other parts of the world.